A few days ago, Siaraji spoke about how when practicing Satipatthana Bhavana, sometimes the yogi's mind doesn't go straight. It's either um, it's either depressed or it's elated. That can happen. It, and it goes up and down like that. So, uh, when the mind meets up with something that isn't good, or one thinks it isn't good, what should be done? And when the mind meets with something good, and then it gets elated, and then one misses one's noting, one misses the object, how to fix this. This is very important. And so, um, so that yogis know how to correct these situations for themselves. This is described in the text, how to fix these. So at this point, it's very important for the meditation teachers to speak about this topic. And so uh, it's good to take time and go over this slowly. So today, Sayadawji will continue to speak about how when the mind uh, is lax and slack, how to correct the situation, and, how, and when the mind is too active or too tight, how to correct this appropriately. In fact, the practice of the Dhamma of Satipatthana Bhavana is to use one's body and mind so that they will be useful, to clean the mind, to add wholesome energies to the mind. And it's similar to having a plot of land. If we have a piece of land that we own, instead of letting it go, uh, we clean it, we clear it, and then we can grow useful things. So if we just let it go, this plot of land, then unbeneficial plants will just sprout up, and then they will multiply, and it will become a big tangle that will be hard to clear. But if we don't just let it go, but we clear clear the land, and then we can plant trees and other plants that will be useful, uh, ones that bear fruit, ones that have flowers, ones that can be harvested. So this is the idea. There's a word in the text, bhumi, and the literal meaning of this is, is that ordinary earth is a place on which living and non-living things depend. They exist on this, on this earth. So it is called Bhumi. And so on this earth there may be uh, useful plants, there may be poisonous plants even, there may be many things that are not useful. And so when we want to have useful plants, what we, when we want to grow useful plants on the earth, first we have to clear it of weeds and only then will we be able to plant. In one's life, this life that is like the earth, Bumi. To for Dhamma, which is clean and civilized and high level, for this to arise, this is what meditation is about. And the Bojangas that Sayadaji has been speaking about, the factors of enlightenment are like very valuable plants 
to be planted in one's life. They need to be created and they need to be developed, nurtured, so that they become strong and capable. The mind and matter that occur related as cause and effect in one's being are like the earth. And it's said in the text, Bhumi Uya Bhumi. It's like the real earth, so one's body too is called Bhumi. In the real, in the physical earth, in the ground, there are both useful plants and useful or un, useless or unbeneficial plants. And one has to plant the useful ones. They have to be planted. They don't just come naturally. So in the earth that is one's body, first of all, one has to, the, the coarse behavior, the gross defilements of body and speech need to be avoided we have to clear out this level of defilements. And the obsessive defilements called pariyotana kilesas, they have to be prevented. And then the latent, the very subtle anusya kilesas, these have to be uprooted so the Buddha gave three methods for doing this. The gross kilesas are to be of, um, are to be dispelled by refraining from doing them, from by avoiding them. And the obsessive kilesas, the pariyotana kilesas, are controlled but suppressed by samadhi concentration. And the latent kilesas, anusya kilesas, are uprooted by vipassana knowledge and path knowledge. So if one doesn't clear these things out, then what it's like is, it's just a field of weeds. And it said, aparinyata kanda kilesa bhumi. That means that like an earth, like a ground where loba, dosa, and moha and various kilesas just sprout, our body is like that. Why? Because one doesn't observe it when it arises. When mind and matter arise, one doesn't observe and know. And therefore, one doesn't know mind and matter, nama and rupa. One doesn't know how they're related as cause and effect. And that which is not observed, this, the kanda, the body of ours, which is not being not observed, it becomes kilesa bhumi, the, the place where kilesa sprout. The cause for this is not observing, not knowing the various characteristics, true dhammas that are there, aparinyata. So how does one know when they arise, one observes, when they're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, when there's bending, stretching, leaning, turning the head, lifting, moving, placing, blinking, opening and closing the eyes. In all the actions we do, rupa and nama are occurring as cause and effect. There are many, many natural characteristics, sabhavas, to be seen. And when, we, when they arise, if we observe them, then our body becomes, first of all, vipassana bhumi, the place where vipassana knowledge grows. And later on, with path knowledge, it becomes panya bhumi. So if one doesn't apply any 
method of control on our plot of land, then undesirable weeds will sprout and they will become a tangle. And at minimum, it's not good to see. And then harmful pests, dangerous animals can come and live in that tangle. So on the other hand, if we, clean the, if we clear the plot of land and plant something, at least then it will be good to look at. So try to develop Vipassana Bhumi. Try to develop this, um, this earth on which Vipassana knowledge grows. This is what the yogis are doing with the practice. And now it has been one month. So to what extent has Vipassana knowledge sprouted in our plots of land? So Sieroji is speaking about this so that you can see for yourselves. And if Vipassana knowledge hasn't started to sprout yet, then make effort, try, respectfully and meticulously. That's the idea in mind. Outside of Sati Sambhojanga, the factor of sati. There is nothing more important for Dhamma Vijaya Sambhojanga to arise. Sati Sambhojanga is the most important factor invo- involved in this quality, the factor of Dhamma Vijaya. Because Sati Sambhojanga doesn't allow carelessness to arise. It's the opposite of pamada, pamada, which is negligence, carelessness. It is the opposite of that. It is heedful, diligent, wakeful. And if we have this quality of sati, then anupasana can occur again and again. When we observe the rising, when the rising occurs, we observe the rising. When the falling occurs, we observe the falling. When other objects arise too, when there's feelings, vedana, good or bad, we observe them. When there's the mind, chitta, arising, we observe the mind. When there's other types of objects arising, those are observed too, observed in the manner of an upasana, repeatedly, again and again. So one has to keep this observation going. For an upasana to occur, to occur there must be ardent effort, atapa. One's effort has to be alert, not sleepy, active, not sluggish. And only if atapa arises will anupasana, repeated observation, arise. And then sati, Due to effort, there is sati, and the word satima indicates that there's a lot of sati. There needs to be a lot of sati in anupasana. And that brings samadhi. So because the, uh, at that time, because of the sati, the mind falls collectedly and the object The mind meets exactly with the object. It connects exactly with the object. And at that point, knowledge arises. Only if these factors are complete is anupasana occurring. If anupasana is occurring, this repeated observation, then the factor of dhamma-vijaya, dhamma-vijaya sambhojanga, automatically has, is arising. 
There's no need to develop it specifically. So this, uh, this is the place where Vipassana arises. This is how our body becomes Vipassana Bhumi. In one's body, we, have, uh, we observe, especially we observe what the rupa, the matter. We observe this in the moments of, we observe seeing the sights, sights, sounds, smells, tastes, touches. And there are external touch, there's external touch, hot and cold air, for example, touching the body. And also there's internal. So the factor of Dhamma Vijaya always investigates and knows the inner and outer objects. It knows, uh, not, it's not reflection, it's, it's knowing precisely. And that's hardness, that's coldness, that's heat. That's seeing consciousness, that's hearing consciousness, that's smelling consciousness, tasting consciousness, touch consciousness, that's mind, that's mindful, um, that's knowing a thought. And together with these types of consciousness, there's pasa, the quality of contact. That's the contact that arises in sight sight contact, hearing contact, feeling, uh, smelling contact, taste contact, touch contact, and thought contact. And then there's the quality of feeling. It's good to, feels good to see. There's the pleasant feeling, the pleasant or unpleasant feeling, good to see, good to hear, good to smell, taste, touch, think. So this is Dhamma. And Dhamma Vijaya knows their natural characteristics. It knows their compound characteristic and their common characteristics. So if, if Sati Sambhojanga is fulfilled, there is no need to create Dhamma Vijaya Sambhojanga. It arises automatically. To the extent that one's practice is respectful, meticulous, continuous. The more so, the more clearly one sees. So we sit down to observe and nothing special is happening, so we watch the rising and the falling one after another. And when the abdomen rises, we observe it from start to finish. When the abdomen falls, we observe it from start to finish with applied effort and following it closely. So at that time, we see stiffness or or tension, tightness, and we just see one, one thing. But when our effort and concentration become stronger, then it seems like two or three risings happen in one in one rising in one big rising so this is how it appears to us it's like how a line of ants looks as we gradually approach it first of all just like a big line but as we get closer it seems like two or three perhaps two or three sections But as one comes closer, the individual ants appear. They become obvious. And sabhava is like this. As one's observation gets clearer and closer, one one sees more and more detail. One sees the pieces of what's involved. And this is... Uh, this is Dhamma. The, what we see is Dhamma. And with the way our mind uh, falls on the object and stays with it, you know, it, we see so clearly that it's like looking through a magnifying glass. 
And this is the quality of Tama Vijaya Sambhojanga. So why it occurs, why this Tama Vijaya Sambhojanga occurs is because of Sati Sambhojanga, because of Sati. Because there is this exceedingly steadfast observation of every arising object, Sati Patana is made up of Sati and Patana. And this means that the Sati is exceedingly uh, firmly established. And because of that firmly established Sati, Dhamma Vijaya arises. So knowing as one does now, people who studied previously, studied about this, read about this, with the knowing that is happening now, they see uh, in a way that is different than what they knew when they were studying. What, they, what people know through the practice is not this, the same as what one knew previously through study. That knowledge gained through study was not your own knowledge. It was not your own experience. This which you know during the practice is your own experience, your own knowledge. So this is the mind which knows. And in the four fields of observation in our, in our being, kaya, vedana, citta, and dhamma, matter, feeling, consciousness, and other objects, there are small observable objects, bits, that arise one by one. And when they arise, one observes them. So one by one, one observes, and one by one, one knows these objects that are arising. And as one continues to observe, the knowing, this, this mind which knows, arises many times. So at as, much, as much as one observes, one knows. So every observation brings a new occurrence of knowledge, and this multiplies. So this is called bhavana, mental development. So if one knows, if one observes and knows, then what is called samoha, intense delusion, intense delusion, intense ignorance, which would occur if one didn't, if we, it would occur in one's being if we didn't observe these objects which arise. But because we observe and know, this group called Samoha doesn't have the chance to arise. And instead, a group called Asamoha arises. And with every observation, one by one, this occurs again and again. And this is Sambodhi. So this Sambodhi is one part of the path, the noble path. Or it is one supporting cause, it is one cause for the yogi who knows what is really there, nama and rupa, and cause and effect. So if, if this, only, this only arises if vipassana knowledge arises. So at this time, when one knows the true nature of nama and rupa, one knows clearly, yata sabhava pativeda lakana panya, the natural characteristic of panya is to 
It knows nama and rupa, mind and matter, clearly. It knows cause and effect. It knows how this, this mind and matter, which are related as cause and effect, arise and then pass away, with the old continually being replaced by the new. Just now it arises and immediately it passes away. Panya penetrates and knows the object. It knows the individual characteristic of the object and it knows the common characteristic. And when this characteristic of Panya arises, it's like light making clear everything that was hidden by the darkness before. One knows clearly. And then, will the yogi waver at this point? Will the yogi have any doubt about what they're observing? So at this uh, point, everything seems very, very clear. And it's because one is observing every second of the time, the arising object. Because of this, one's knowledge becomes very clear, very distinct. And this type of knowing is called Dhamma Vidya. So we can, we can know when we have this type of very distinct knowledge that this is Dhamma Vidya. And at this time there won't be any wavering. One knows everything very clearly. For example, at the stage of Udhya Bhayanyana, observe seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena, one can observe even very subtle objects very clearly. As when one hears, the ear, the sound, two parts are physical. The ear base is not the ear itself, but it's a receptor, a play, what is in, a type of matter which is in the ear that is capable of receiving sound. And the sound itself is physical too, matter. It's what strikes the ear. So the ear and sound, two parts are physical. Hearing, contact, feeling, these are mind. There's hearing, knowing the sound. There's also contact. <clears throat> contact between the mind and the object. And there's feeling, good or bad. It's good to hear, or it's bad to hear. So if we analyze what happens in the moment of hearing, there are these parts, the ear and the sound, are matter, or rupa. Hearing, contact, and feeling, these are mind, nama. So one is knowing clearly at this time the, the truth of suffering, and it's very satisfying when one can know like this. And it doesn't just happen in hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing, the old always being replaced by the new. One sees these very clearly in every type of experience. So when this knowledge arises, just keep on practicing, just keep on observing. This person is sure to, to realize path, fruition, and Nibbana. So the practicing yogi, um, Siroji, uh, said that the remaining causes for the practicing yogi who knows in this way it's good if these remaining causes are fulfilled, the remaining causes for one to be a yogi who knows. But in sum, the Buddha said in, in the text, in short, that sati sambhojanga and dhammavajya sambhojanga are the most important. And the Pali that Sieroji read means that, O oh monks, the yogi has to note steadfastly 
and then Sampajano, the yogi will know, the yogi will know uh, um, clearly for oneself. The yogi will know completely. The yogi will know uh, in a way that is distinct that is better, uh, the yogi will know uh, in a very clear way. So, sampajano. And the yogi should dwell knowing in this way. To dwell means every posture that we are in, whether large or small, sitting, standing, walking, lying down. And to live like that is the repeated instruction of the Buddha for our sakes. So this is the best instruction to, uh, another way to say it is to dwell mindfully and fully aware, sato sampajano. So if one wants to know the, the brief instruction, it is to observe steadfastly and as one makes effort to observe, one comes to know nama and rupa, how these are related as cause and effect, and how they arise and pass away in a very fleeting manner. And if one reaches this stage, then one is sure to gain special dhamma if one continues the practice. So tomorrow, Seroji will speak about the other, the other uh, supporting causes for this knowledge called Sambodhi, or the other causes for the, pers- the one who knows in this way. Today, what Seroji has spoken about are the factors Sati Sambojanga and Dhamma Vidya Sambojanga. In-